the things that left-handers claim make them special, uh, there's no experimental evidence for that, unfortunately. And this does not make me popular <laughs> with left-handers. How to define handedness is not that easy of a question to answer. <laughs> Researchers often define handedness for research purposes by the hand used for writing. It is the most cited task. Very few people can write equally well with both hands. You'll find many, many more consistent right-handers, that's people who only use their right hand, than you would find left-handers. The most recent information on the general breakdown is on average, there are 90% right-handers, 10% left-handers, but that varies with culture and country. There's a couple of theories about why that is. Uh, one is that they're growing up and uh, living in a right-handed world, so they just adapt. The other theory uh, is more related to the brain. Left-handers tend to be more whole-brained than right-handers. That means that they use both their right and left hemispheres more so than right-handers do. So it's just easier for them if the task demands it to use their right hand. Being able to recruit both the left and right hemisphere resources for certain tasks is an advantage. It's long been known that left-handers have a better ability to recover from strokes. So this ability to be able to recruit more brain resources is an advantage. In things like fencing, the most decorated fencer of all time was a right-hander who trained themselves to fence left-handed. Rafael Nadal, the tennis player, is a right-hander who plays tennis left-handed. That's another place where left-handers have a real advantage. Phil Mickelson is a right-hander who golfs left-handed, especially hand-to-hand -hand close sports like fencing where you're up against an opponent. Left-handedness has a real advantage. I don't see the right-handed world changing much in the near future. The 90-10 split is going to always be with us. It's been part of the human history for millennia. You can go back to the ancient Greeks and find a study I did with a colleague in which we looked at works of art going back to 50 BC, and you find the same split of 10% left-handers, 90% right-handers. So. I'm afraid that's part of the human heritage. Way back when, when hand-to-hand -hand combat was common for survival, left-handers had an advantage in hand-to-hand -hand combat because uh, they were rare and right-handers weren't used to fighting with them. And so the notion was that their survival potential was raised because they had this surprise advantage. So the rarer they are, the more likely is that they will survive based on this surprise notion that people aren't used to dealing with them. So that's kind of the idea of why there has been for millennia this feisty minority of left-handers. We're learning more and more about the brain. Basically, right and left-handers are the same. <laughs> except one uses their left hand to write, the other one uses their right hand to write, and you only pick up these subtle differences uh, when you do neural imaging studies. But on a day-to-day -day basis, left-handers are the same as right-handers. Sorry. <laughs>